pretty much like anything musical. And my birthday was not so long ago, so my wife got me this like frog. That I don't know why I'm showing this to you. There you have it. First question. Recently on your podcast, you said that you completed a five-year plan for your filmmaking career. How would someone go about creating their own five-year filmmaking plan? I can't really tell you how to make your own five-year plan because everybody's path is totally different. It's like we're all going to the same party, but we're all getting there in different ways. Every filmmaker I know has a different story and path that they've taken than I have. But for me, creating that five-year plan was very much about looking at where I was at that time and where I wanted to be and being as objective as possible to look at my own weakness and my lack of experiences and then chase those down, get to that point where I've, you know, checked off all the boxes of the things that I felt like I had to, you know, gain confidence in, experience in, to be able to move to that next level. So, I mean, just taking the most recent as an example, Ballistic was a huge crew. Over 100 people were on set at one point, which is more than triple than we've ever had on set before. So it was very much about learning to maintain a crew of that size and work in that kind of an atmosphere. And we had a lot of practical effects that I never worked with before, certain action sequences that I had never done before, working with a child actor. There, there was just a lot and a lot more uh, then that was involved with it all as well, which was just a handful of things that I felt that I needed those experiences to be able to move forward. But every production that I've done for the past five years, going back to the action month even, which was very much about working with a stunt team for the very first time and doing uh, certain fight scenes uh, properly for the very first time to get that experience under my belt, knowing how long these things take to choreograph, to set up and to execute on was really important to me because it's totally different than just having a couple of people and just doing it run and gun. It's a very different beast. So to be able to captain that ship, you got to know how all that stuff goes. And, uh, you know, those are very much boxes I wanted to check. So that was my thinking of this is where I want to get to, to where I know I'll be able to accomplish this thing. So what are the things from now to then that I need to, like I said, sure up in myself, you know, find that confidence or get that experience, whatever it was. And then I just, you know, started checking off those boxes along the way. And again, every path is different, but it's just that idea of seeing where your weaknesses are and then starting to check them off. Advice on critiquing a friend's script while not offending them. I always start with the good, what I really liked, showing that I get what they're going for, and then uh, just being very honest. I mean, me personally, I don't want somebody to skim over something that's bumping them just because they think they're going to hurt my feelings. That's that's not going to help. You just don't, you know, don't be a douche about it. <laughs> you know, put it in the kindest way that you can, you know, because it you know it does suck to get negative feedback. So it is a little bit painful. So, you know, soften the blow as much as you can. Uh, but I would say the number one uh, piece of advice I could give is just start with all the stuff that you did like about it, uh, that that was really good about it. And, you know, try to show that you get what they're going for and then uh, move on to the critiques. Do you work on storyboards with your DP or do you make them on your own and then give them to your DP? Everybody's different, but I personally do them on my own and give them to my DP. And then we discuss that and then we'll usually change things around as we discuss it and figure out what's best for the scene. When creating a shot list slash storyboards, do you have an idea of which ones could be cut for time if the day calls for it? Or do you make those decisions on set based on how the day is going? I make those decisions on set based on how the day is going. I do have a tendency of over shot listing. I want more shots than I actually need. That's something that I'm working on. Uh, but uh, I usually know just by looking at it what I can cut it down to. But having that, you know, initial build out really helps me, you know, break that down and, and look at what is the absolute mandatory, you know, amount of shots that I need. So it's, e it's easier to cut than create when you're moving quickly. So I I'm glad I do it that way rather than, you know, obviously the other way around. But I don't think about what can be cut on the day. If it could be cut on the day, I, I don't put it on. I don't need it. So I only put the stuff in there that I think I need. It's just the vision alters and changes and condenses. Do you ever miss your DIY roots? No, I do not because I am firmly planted in them. We still are very DIY. There was stuff even in Ballistic that was very DIY. Uh, how we made certain things um, for the film 
was very uh, DIY style and we made it look like something it absolutely wasn't like, you know, making it seem like it's a basement by just getting a door from Home Depot and planning up against something and it wasn't even like drilled down or anything, but it worked great. I mean, we still use can lights all the time. We still use stuff that we built all the time. I still love using shower curtains, all the bounce boards we've have, we have, we made ourselves. So we do have some solid gear and whatnot, but still things are, you know, we're little to no budget with most everything, especially film, right? Film, right. is a no budget show. We don't have a budget for the show. You know, we do that it's still very, very much backyard filmmaking. So that's DIY on a regular basis. And then when it comes to films, I mean, even on the larger basis, there's a DIY aspect to it. I mean, grips are basically, that's their job. They make you know something out of nothing all the time. So I think it's just a really good thing to have, to be able to use all the time. I mean, even with a large crew, I was using my DIY uh, way of thinking to solve problems cheaply and quickly. So I don't miss it because I'm still very much in it. Domain.com is all your website needs, including .com and .net. Domain names and intuitive website builders so you can start creating a website and sharing your ideas with the world. They're affordable, reliable, and have all the tools that you need to build that website and create an identity online. And no domain extension is going to help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And if you want to brand yourself online, Domain.com has over 300 domain name extensions to fit your needs from .club to .space. Of course, the people over at Domain.com want to give you 15% off their already affordable prices when you get domain names, web hosting, and email. Just use the coupon code FILMRIOT at Domain com's check out and when you think domain names think domain.com logo so that's it for today which means it's time for my suggestion of the week and this is something i actually haven't watched yet i watched the first little bit of it and had to shut it off and get back to work but alien isolation has released i think it's 10 episodes total we'll put a link down below if you're an alien fan like i am you'll definitely want to check this out seems like it's going to be pretty amazing and it's going to be my lunchtime event for the next few days for sure so definitely check a link for that below and until next time don't forget to write shoot edit repeat 